Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Shop Essentials with me, Tom Sands. Today, we are gonna look at the ultimate binding jig from Elevate. Now, binding is a job that uh, strikes fear into the heart of even the most seasoned uh, of luthiers, especially if you're working on a guitar that maybe has some expensive exotic woods or some figured woods. So it's always great to try and explore some easier, cleaner, safer, and more efficient methods. And the Elevate Ultimate Binding Jig is a tool designed to do all of those things and more. It's a tool to make all of your binding dreams come true. Let's get into it. As with all Elevate tools, it is extremely well conceived, thought about, machined, manufactured. It's a, a really fine example of why uh, tools for guitar making should usually come from the minds of somebody who builds really great quality instruments. Chris Ensor, founder of Elevate, builds some great guitars and so he is in a very uh, good position to uh, come up with some some great jigs and this is another example of one of his pieces of genius. So for the last however long uh, I've been binding my guitars using the stationary router in a tower combined with uh, a guitar body held in a cradle um, which is a very very common sight in, in most luthery workshops. It works fine, but it has its foibles. This jig is designed to tackle some of those and it works in a kind of the opposite way uh, to the, this kind of more traditional setup. This jig is designed to work with uh, router laminate trimmers. So this is a Bosch Colt or here in the UK, this is referred to as the GKF 600, but it's the same as a, a Colt if you're in the US. Um, it's also designed to work with the rigid laminate trimmer, which is a US, um, I think they come from Home Depot or something like that. We don't have rigid here, we do have the Bosch. The jig is also designed to work with um, your other kind of generic laminate trimmers um, and you can acquire a um, adapter plate. So if like me, you have a variety of laminate trimmers, this is a, a Makita, well, it's actually a clone, uh, a Makita clone trimmer. Um, Elevate provide this adapter plate, goes on the bottom of here, and then it'll allow you to attach it to this jig. Um, this router is currently set up for something else. The Bosch is the one I have spare, and it's the one I'm gonna use for this demonstration. So, as I've already said, with all the Elevate tools, they are really beautifully machined. This is made from aluminium. We have got the main body of the jig, which the router gets mounted to. We've got this plastic, black plastic donut, which will bear up against the guitar. It's one of the points of contact when you're using the jig. We've got what's called the, the zero bar here, which I'll come on to in a moment. We've got this adjustable arm, which the guitar is gonna rest on, the sides of the guitar are gonna rest on here. It's adjustable um, to account for different sizes of bindings and purflings, which I'll come on to in a moment. The jig is supplied with a one inch kind of rebate cutter. So before we get into mounting the router in the jig, first thing we need to do is take off the plastic base. Don't need that anymore. Then we're gonna insert the provided router bit. This is gonna cut the channels. In she goes, or he, or they. We have got the four screws that we used to fix the plastic base. What we're gonna do, sit this on here, screws line up really nicely. The holes are slightly uh, elongated for reasons I'll come on to in a moment. So we're just gonna tighten those down just, just until they bite. So that might give you a better, a better sense of the configuration of the jig and you might start to get an idea of how this thing is gonna work. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna unlock this um, support arm and we are going to wind it up until it hits what's called the zero bar, this kind of registration bar. Using um, a square, I'm going to use a machinist square with a wide bottom here. I want to make sure that the support or it kind of zero with 
the router cutter. And here is where we adjust the position of the router on the jig itself until there is no clearance, or until the cutter is in contact with the square and therefore in alignment with the support. I can just go ahead and tighten those screws. So now it's locked in place. It's locked at home base. So because we are in the business of custom instruments, um, with each guitar that we make, we may be using a different size purfling. We might be using a different size binding. And so what that would normally mean is that for each guitar that I would build, I'd need a different bearing uh, to go with the binding cutter using my old method. The great thing about this jig is that with the... Uh, adjustable support arm and the zero bar. You can have infinite variability uh, into when it comes to deciding what binding and perfling you want. And you don't need to have thousands of cutters or thousands of bearings, which is awesome. Very, very simple and just a great idea. We're gonna use the binding stock itself to set the tool, which is just a great idea. So gonna unlock the locking nut at the back here. We're gonna lower the support arm and um, we're just going to post that binding through until it's under the zero arm, under the zero bar. And then we're just going to wind the support arm back up until it just pinches that binding. And then we're going to lock that back off. Next thing we need to do is just adjust for the depth. And again, using the binding itself. Awesome. All right, just to give you a better view, uh, I'm going to turn this around and um, I'm going to make a test cut to make sure that everything is hunky-dory. So before we get started, let's talk, take a minute to talk about workshop safety. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. Be sure to read, understand and follow all of the safety rules that come with your power tools. In this case, make sure that if you are going to get this jig, you check out um, Elevate's online tutorial on how to use it. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these. Safety glasses, dust mask, and ear defenders as well. It also helps to have a good filtration system. And if you wanna get super tech about it, we're gonna hook, hook up a dust extractor as well. So I've set the depth perfectly, um, and now it's time to pick up a guitar. The obvious thing to point out here is that the setup and the orientation of this jig is very different to a more traditional approach where you have the, the body in a cradle. So it does take a little bit of getting used to, um, and I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit scared the first time I used it, but there's nothing to be scared of. It works really nicely, and it just, once you've got the knack for it, no problem. If you start with placing the guitar on the outermost uh, bearing, then offering it up until the, the top face of the guitar touches the, this donut portion, and then we're gonna drop it into the cut, and then work our way around, making sure that the guitar is always in, the body of the guitar is always in contact with these three points. So that's the binding channels cut, or at least on the face of the guitar. As you can see, it does take a little bit of care and coordination. Um, that's only the second time I've used it. Um, so with a little bit of practice, you get a little bit more fluid with it. But the binding channels are really nice and clean. The cutter did a great job. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take care of the back. So a really nice feature of this jig is that now I don't, ha I don't have to reset anything. Um, I don't have to adjust the uh, body of the guitar in a cradle. I can just flip it around and away we go. Mm -hmm. 
So if you've done a binding job on a guitar with a cutaway, you'll know that cutting a clean channel on the back side of the cutaway is always notoriously difficult. If you're using a standard router on a tower and a guitar in a cradle configuration, um, and that's due to the, the pitch of the back changing and it throws the geometry of the cutter out. With this, because the jig is designed to work um, parallel to the sides as opposed to perpendicular to the back, uh, or perpendicular to the side, sorry, you get um, a really nice even cut with a flat a bottom that's 90 degrees to the side. So now we're gonna go ahead and take care of the purfling. To do that, we're gonna take our purfling stock and our binding stock. We're gonna mate those two together. We're gonna go in there with the purfling and the binding together. Just pinch that. And there we go. Just make sure that's nicely locked off. Next thing, we need to set the depth. Let's do a test cut. So the Elevate Ultimate Binding Tool, Ultimate Binding Jig, who is it for and why do you need it? If you are in a small shop, you want something with a compact footprint, this is definitely the way to go. Lives in your vise, you can put it away in a cupboard or a drawer, no problem at all. No need for a body cradle or a router tower. If you are somebody who is always mixing up your purflings and bindings, doing different widths and depths, Again, this tool is great. As you've seen, it's really easy to adjust and it's infinitely variable. So no more hunting around for binding uh, cutters and bearings and trying to do weird maths. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a good one and it's time for me to put some binding on these guitars. Until next time.